six minute video. What's up? Now, Endymion is t talking about Capcom. Bro, it just got even worse. I am a cry. <laughs> She's still on it. Uh, Capcom exposed for accepting woke agenda. Plus, Batman Arkham artist rejects suicide. I mean, Sushi Squad. Sushi Squad. TikTok, don't listen to me. Uh, <laughs> Sushi Squad. So, um, so uh, D Man's going to give his, his uh, take on the whole Capcom situation and the Batman Arkham artist uh, responses on the su uh, Sushi Squad situation. I only use the word Sushi Squad because of Kyle, so I'm not original with that at all. But it's a great way to get around the, the, the uh, bot that's listening. All right, let's go. Everyone, it's Endymion, and there's a ton of interesting stories to go over today. From a legacy voice actor getting cancelled over a hit piece, one game development studio tied to Sweet Baby admitting they're actively working to rewrite history, and a Batman Arkham series artist blasting his former employer and more. There's a lot, I know, so let's first begin with that Capcom story. So this has to do with Ruben Langdon, a longtime veteran of the video game voice acting industry. Langdon is the voice of Dante in Devil May Cry, uh -oh. and he was also the voice of Ken Masters in the Street Fighter series until what I'm about to discuss happened. And uh -oh. the point of this story is how woke lunatics will go to any lengths in order to tear down the legacies of beloved franchises by rewriting new histories. So, Langdon was fired from playing Ken in Street Fighter a few years back, and the oh, reason- no. The guy who does the voice of Dante and Devil May Cry has been fired to do his voice as Ken and uh and Street Fighter. That they did my and Tyler Lee dirty with the actors and we already met them in the third episode. We did even meet up with them in Omashu with King Boomy. Yeah, the the whole story is going to be screwed. It's so. all wrong and backwards loudly crying face. Yeah. But like the voice actor who does the voice of um Dante, I don't think he's going to be playing Dante anymore. Um given what I'm hearing so far, because he's been fired to do the voice of Ken from Ken Masters from Street Fighter, and that's Capcom, so like, probably he won't be doing the voice of Dante anymore, too. Zening was never really given as to why this was happening. After all, in fans' eyes, Langdon was the de facto Ken voice in Street Fighter. He's been doing it for years, and people obviously love him in the role. Fans were pissed that Langdon was removed without an explanation, but now, thankfully, we, we have the entire story. Langdon was on a Twitter space discussion, which in case you don't know what that is, basically Twitter has a feature where users can join a channel and they can all speak to one another through their devices. I'm sorry, if you're a, a voice actor, an actor, or any type of person- We were supposed to meet Ty Lee in the circus and Mai in Omasha cause her family had control of the place, um. Mm. If, you, if you're a person who does the voice, does voice acting, or you're in a game, or- like, if you're famous and you have any type of notoriety in the slightest, whether it's big or small, don't go on fucking Twitter. Twitter is the worst place to ever give your opinion because you're going to be destroyed somehow, whether you're right or wrong. It's just the worst place to put opinions or talk about stuff because there's going to be people waiting on your downfall to ruin your whole shit. It's essentially a live stream podcast, but on Twitter, and pretty much anybody can do it. No. Anyway, a bunch of YouTubers like Tenryo the Light, Captain Dave Beard, Boomer Tiro, and Mechel Casanova, as well as others, all assembled in a big Twitter space and had Langdon on so he could speak unfiltered directly to fans of the games that he's worked on. Uh -oh. This story starts in 2019, and it's a long one, so I will now recite it for you, and I quote, so, 2019, I'm back in Japan, and I did an interview for some guys out of Florida, YouTubers, Toy Bounty Hunters, Hero Hey, and Yellow Flash. I didn't even know them very well, or what they're- I think that someone has cast a level 10 Endless Winter spell. What are you suggesting, Elf? Stan has been acting strange ever since he- Their background was, they just asked me if I could come on and do an interview for Devil May Cry 5, since either it just came out, or was just coming out. In that interview, they brought up this whole fiasco with Vic Mignogna, and because I had worked oh. with Vic, they were sort of asking my opinion. I had no idea. I didn't know what kind of trouble Vic was in. I didn't know what was going on there. They had asked me some questions about my experience working with him, and I just told them, hey, as far as I know, Vic's been a stand-up guy. He's been a man of his word to me. I can't say otherwise, and as far as I've seen him navigate things uh -oh. with women and that kind of thing... Of course, he seemed like a ladies' man, but it never seemed like it went much further than that. Uh -oh. Then you hear all of this stuff, and I'm like, Once I can't. Start talking about Vic Mignogna. Vic Mignogna. It went left. 
once they brought that up comment on that so then i started talking about other stuff like the me too movement and black lives matter Look and how those groups start off as Facebook. a good thing but oftentimes they get hijacked and at that time okay, we'll i guess it. it was still a little too early to say that because now we know look at the leaders of black lives matter and what they've done with the money and all that stuff we know with the me too movement and all so newsweek calls me and says hey we want to do an interview with you in regard to your comments that you did in that podcast and I said, yeah, sure, absolutely. This was all done by email and I have the records. I have the receipts. And I said, sure, I'd be happy to do an interview and talk about what I said about Me Too and Black Lives oh, Matter God. and clarify that if you wish. However, when it comes to Vic, I'm not going to comment because I don't know the situation and it's not my place to say anything. Then this Newsweek article by that writer, no idea who it was, came out and was basically talking things that I had said in the interview out of context or with no context. And just saying, Rubin said this and this and this about Black Lives Matter and me too, that I'm a right-wing extremist, that I'm oh a UFO alien believer crazy nutcase, which is crazy because two months prior, Newsweek had interviewed me for a magazine article. Newsweek's best- God, it was a whole hit piece. Today. That's crazy. Commands like, slash donation and, slash cash that should have been something to let you know some shit was going down. Some shit went down. That's not good. Wait, what? You said you sent me something? Oh, he sent it on Facebook. Okay, never mind. Hold on, guys. She has chubby face as you. <laughs> she has a chubby face just like yours. Aww, so Special cute. edition Life Beyond Thanks. Earth, talking about ETs and extraterrestrial life. They did an article on me, and I'm highlighted in a positive way. This other guy from Newsweek puts out this total fake news article. Hey, I was telling my wife about how fake news is a real Aww. thing, and how even <laughs> mainstream media goes do in and does hit pieces though. on other whistleblowers. This is the conspiracy theory stuff before my situation, and she was with me, but not really, and then this whole thing came out, and she was witness to everything that happened. So some people wrote Capcom, particularly Street Fighter series producer Yoshinori Ono. He saw it, and I guess he lost his shit. He didn't understand the nuances and didn't bother to reach out to ask me what the hell's going on. He got super scared and actually called. I remember this very clearly because this was a few days before E3 started. My partner calls me and he goes, Ruben, what did you do? And I'm like, what do you mean? I didn't do anything. You don't realize how much damage you've done. We just lost the Street Fighter gig. Yeah, because of that Newsweek article. We, the motion capture company just caused productions that I was no longer a part of, actually lost a multi-million dollar gig. Because Ono, in a oh. sense, thought that I was still part of the company, which I wasn't, didn't do any research, any homework, didn't look into it, or even bother to have a conversation. I tried to arrange a meeting so I could sit down with Ono-san and explain what happened, that this was all taken out of context, this was not the case. It was a hit piece, literally, from this Newsweek guy, but Ono-san wouldn't have it, he wouldn't even take a meeting, it was crazy. Everybody was trying to get me a meeting, so you know, I just left it as it is, did my apologies to my partner, I'm sorry this has happened this way, this is just the crazy world we're in. So basically, all that happened, years later, COVID hits, and then yes, I'm very vocal about the jab about the forced vaccinations, which is a breaking of a Nuremberg Code from World War II. To force inject anyone with anything without their consent, we already learned this lesson, and just to see this industry, my industry, the entertainment industry, take that stance, broke my heart, and I was like, I don't want any part of this. And so a few months after that, Devil May Cry series producer Hidetaki Itsuno calls me up and says, Hey Ruben, can you come back to Japan and do a mocap? We're going to do a special edition of DMC5. So I went back and I asked Itsuno-san and my partner too, what's the deal? How come you guys didn't flip out over Ruben's Newsweek article? And they were like, yeah, we looked into it and it's fine. So the DMC team included looking into and saw what a bunch of BS it was, including Itsuno-san. They did the research and totally validated Bruh, but the characters don't match. They could have found more skinny peeps not to be rude. I, I don't think that's rude. I understand. But, you know, ESG. It's just ESG. What you're, what you're staring at, Kitty, is what I've been complaining about for years. You're just now, you're, now you're the casual normie is now noticing this shit.
when I was saying this shit, it was considered hateful, hate speech, all this X, Y, and Z on TikTok or whatever case may be. Whenever I talked about this shit, you are the normie who I've been towing this to and you fall asleep to what I'm saying. Now you're looking straight at it and you're pissed off at your show. That's exactly what you're, you're expecting. You're getting what I've been talking about from years and you get called a certain name or whatever case may be for pointing out the obvious on why something NGL is not working. PTSD crap with Kodera is really bothering me. Yes, that, that part, yes, that is part of the, 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 the anxiety stuff that they're pushing in and all that stuff. They're trying to be as diverse as possible from mental health all the way to race and this, that, and the third. Everything and anything they can chew in, they will do it. You, this is not an Avatar. This is, a, this, is, this is something completely different that you're dealing with. That is not Avatar The Last Airbender. It, it, it ha it's only by name. It's not the show. Validated that I didn't say anything to offend anybody, or I wasn't whatever Newsweek tried to make me out as. All the lies. So it was fine. End quote. That was a lot to recite, but it's important you get the whole picture, and what we just witnessed was a legacy voice actor in one of gaming's oldest franchises getting cancelled and fired from a role over his words being taken out of context. And this is why it's important for things like those Twitter spaces and free speech platforms in general. Because without them, Langdon's words would be further transformed in order to hurt him solely because he doesn't ban the- Here in Gaza, where every day is a- this. No, I'm not listening to this to the woke agenda and notice how when langdon was a part of that twitter space that not a single mainstream site your ign's or your game spots would run an article defending langdon however when newsweek ran their hit piece of course the mainstream media outlets dogpiled on him as much as they could this is the danger of modern gaming journalism or honestly entertainment journalism as a whole these days there is a ton of activists and bad actors out there looking to ruin someone like langdon because they don't agree with him and this is what I'm saying when I mean these mainstream sites tend to go out of their way to rewrite new histories. Because even if these stories told our lies, all it takes is for people to ignore the truth and then that lie can in time become the new truth and gospel. Yep. And in Langdon's case, that's exactly uh -huh. what happened. His career took a hit and he lost a lucrative deal with Capcom when it came to Street Fighter. Thankfully, at least the Devil May Cry team didn't fall for the same bait and actually did their research. According to Langdon, which he also said during that Twitter space talk, is that the Street Fighter producer that fired him ended up leaving the company the following years due to a lot of inner turmoil with Capcom. Are you so kidding? not only was Langdon wrongfully fired, but it was done by a producer who was butting heads with Capcom's executives already. It was all a giant well, we mess. Hired him. What the hell? So let me get this straight. The guy who fired him was Kodera a already met the guy. Are you the serious? Tree. So the dude, so the dude who fired uh, uh Ruben, who does the voice of Dante and Ken, or now not Ken anymore, was having issues with Capcom already. So out of a bl out of like a, a a a blaze of glory, he takes out the person who does the voice of Ken Masters all these years from Street Fighter just to prove a point, or just to get a last say after he leaves the company. Are you serious right now? Hire that man back. What are you doing? I'm saying, but it's important we document and spread awareness for what these sorts the of stories. Because you and I both know you He's won't hear IGN to... or others going out of their What's way to admit they were wrong. Four aim learns the four elements and is ready to defeat Fire Lord Oza. What's next in the episode four? Uh, was four hours and ready. Wow, that's in one season. Long when they dogpiled on Langdon like they did, nor will Newsweek. And this is the power of the cancel culture these often woke activism drenched weirdos push. It doesn't matter if what is being said is true or not. All that matters is if their echo chambers believe it enough to make it a new truth, a new history. And then a lie can be just as powerful as any other weapon and be used to destroy people who don't agree with them, and that's scary to me. And it makes what people like myself, Yellow Flash, Critical Drinker, or more do that it's so important. Because if the actual community, the people like yourself and me, don't speak up against these sorts of things, they will just become the new normal. And like Langdon said when it came to the pandemic, it baffled him how easily the public's Never opinions on things could be swayed or transformed. And it was, episode. after all, only through fear and misinformation. This brings me to a sweet baby partner in the form of Compulsion Games. These are the same people who made games like Contrast and We Happy Few, and their next game is called South of Midnight which you likely haven't heard of because it doesn't look particularly interesting or noteworthy, but that's not the point. Like I said, Compulsion is a client of Sweet Baby, and remember when Crystal Dynamics attacked the Tomb Raider remasters and condemned them, calling them a collection of racist, out-of-touch games they don't agree with? 
Well, Compulsion Games then decided to retweet that and had some words to say, so let's read uh -oh. it. Many video games are a product of the times they were created in. As we look to recreate and remaster these stories for modern audiences, it's important to consider the implications of these harmful portrayals and do our part to rewrite new history and not repeat it. We applaud our peers at Crystal Dynamics for their reflections and corrections. Sweet Jesus Christ on a That's treadmill, no. fellas. There's a lot of loaded words in that statement that are Whoa. awful. What Compulsion says here, especially that one part to do their part to rewrite new history, is what I've said previously concerning Langdon and the whole Street Fighter DMC situation. Studios like Compulsion, as well as Crystal Dynamics, are companies hell-bent on erasing the past and creating new narratives that benefit their ideological stances. This means rejecting what core franchises are about, whether it's Tomb Raider or creating new ones like this South of Midnight game that nobody will play. And the fact they unironically use the term modern audiences when saying what they're making their products for is all the proof you need as to what they're making is absolutely going to be dead on arrival. Nothing of any worth comes when a studio says the thing they're making is for modern audiences. Because yep. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but that term doesn't make any sense. Because there is no modern audience, there is only the audience, the same people that have always been there. This magical, super left-leaning, woke, mind-rotted monolith places like Compulsion or Crystal Dynamics believes exists is ridiculous. And we already saw what happened when Crystal Dynamics made an Avengers game for modern audiences. It failed, it imploded, and now you can't even buy the game anymore unless you have it pre-installed on something prior to it being delisted. Because they took an Avengers game and they made Kamala Khan one of the most woke, tokenized New Age Marvel characters that fans have been rejecting for oh, years now. Oh man, I hate playing as Kamala Khan in the fucking uh, Avengers game. That was boring as hell, I hated her powers. She had that jump thing going on, that was kind of funny when she jumps and stuff. But like, other than that, I did not like playing as her, it was really boring. Now. The same Kamala Khan who had the least watched Disney Plus show and headlined Disney's biggest bomb in their history. And they forced that character into a leading role with Avengers and the result was utter oblivion because like I said, that Avengers game is now gone forever. So it's incredible to me that when faced with the financial devastation of Marvel's Avengers that Crystal Dynamics has decided to double down on this woke narrative. And it's pathetic to see exactly what harmed Ruben Langdon's voice acting career being pushed by these moronic game studios. Compulsion has also been ousted for having a rather racist employee in their midst who, by the way, has no problem shouting from the rooftops just how racist they are. Wow. This Compulsion Games employee is this person, Katie, and don't oh, harass this person. Uh, <laughs> minority saying insane shit? <laughs> That's a vibe. And by the way, let's just look into what they're saying and you can see in real time how this sort of insanity is rotting the Thank games industry the within. Shit. They're a DEI consultant, which is already a red flag, but it gets worse. They're also your typical left-leaning, openly racist person, where they tweet stuff like, how I sleep at night not caring about making white people uncomfortable. Expecting people of color to extend empathy, take the moral high ground over a racist, imperialist colonizer you want white people to be oppressed so bad. Like, I'm sorry y'all don't have lips, but that's a personal problem. Oh, As you can see, this is someone who- Why do they think this is smart to say on the internet? I don't understand why they think it's smart to say this stupid shit on the internet. Sokka has a lazy eye, loudly crying face, Sokka loudly crying face, eye. loudly crying face, loudly crying face. <laughs> You're still complaining about that shit. <laughs> you still complaining about that shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. This sounds familiar, NGL. Not gonna lie, yeah, you know how this is gonna go, bro. Very clearly thinks white individuals are the devil and believes they're a victim and all their problems are yep, tied to the, the existence yep, of white people yep, because it's a convenient cop-out for them. And I think this other tweet just says it all. Honestly, I hate gamers. Ah uh, yes, this Whoa. is definitely someone who should be working in video games. Someone who hates the people who keeps them employed and attacks large demographics of people for simply existing. Hateful people like this exist a dime a dozen in the game industry, but it's but a taste of what I'm saying when I present to you how these companies allow these people to not only stay employed, but these studios actually endorse and encourage this sort of behavior. Because we both know if a white developer said this exact same thing about what? black players, they would be excommunicated immediately. It's not okay, no matter which way this sort of rhetoric goes, and I'm tired of the double standards. And that phrase, rewrite new history, should become a new term when talking about these sorts of like-minded racist individuals. 
Because it's proving the point, which is that what's going on these days, especially in Western studios, is a deliberate push to change things. It's not necessarily about the creativity of what video games are even about anymore, but instead it's about overriding and implementing the socio-political stances these echo chamber cycles believe in into every piece of media that they make. And it's done deliberately without a care of what came before or what made the things they're ruining popular to begin with. This oh, leads shit, me to the does. next story, which concerns Batman <laughs> Arkham shit. and, of course, Suicide Squad yeah, Kill the does. Justice League. Gabe Eltabe, who's an American comic book artist and writer, he worked on the Batman Arkham comics and had this to say when it came to Rocksteady's Suicide Squad game. I guess I was right. You left-wing activists cannot make great or even mediocre art. Enjoy your failure. You've earned it. You could never match what I did with Carlos de Anda and Paul Dini in the Arkham universe. Art is about truth and beauty. Commies are nothing but cowards and hacks. Don't hire social justice warrior activists unless you want to lose money. As for what Gabe is referring to, well, there's been some articles recently where it's said that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has dipped below 1,000 players on Steam. This article from TheGamer.com cites that Suicide Squad has lost around 85% of its player base already since launch. Which, need I remind you as of the making of this video, it hasn't even been a full month since Squad's release. But it's actually gotten even worse since this article came out. I can confirm again as of this video being posted that Suicide Squad is sitting at around 127 players currently on Steam. You read that right, friends. 127 people are all that's playing dirty. Suicide Squad, not even a month after Sorry, release. Loud, loud, and the face, game has an loud, entire loud, year of content loud, coming, face. and they've effectively lost the majority of their player base entirely already, at least on Steam anyway. I'm sure some will come back to check out the game once DLC drops, but 127 players this soon after release is beyond abysmal. As I've stated in some recent videos, I've actually gone back and played some Batman Arkham myself. I platinum Batman Arkham Asylum again already recently, this time on PS4, and I'm currently 47% done the entirety of Batman Arkham City again and loving every minute of it. Arkham City is 13 years old at this point, yet it feels like it was made yesterday. Everything about that game sings of gameplay perfection, and I'll do it after this. Level design is so incredible. And when I first played City and completed it back in 2011, I largely ignored the Riddler trophies because I was younger and impatient. But now, I've thrown myself into collecting them and finding the puzzles surrounding these Riddler trophies to honestly be some of the best content in the game. Like Gabe, who drew those Arkham comics, said, art is about truth. And the rock city of today is but a shadow of itself as it's been overrun by like-minded activist weirdos. The likes who would agree with someone like that person who works at Compulsion Games. And Suicide Squad like Crystal Dynamics or Compulsion Games, these studios that personify that belief of rewriting new history by killing the legacies of what made these companies oh, great before, the right whether they, it's they shooting Batman dead right in an alley or... Compulsion. Or, there's a lot. They're compulsive. This leads me to the they're next story which concerns Batman stuff. Arkham and of course Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Gabe Eltabe, who's an American comic book point yet it feels like it was made yesterday. Everything about that game sings of gameplay perfection, and its level design is so incredible. And when I first played City and completed it back in 2011, I largely ignored the Riddler trophies because I was younger and impatient. But now, I've thrown myself into collecting them and finding the puzzles surrounding these Riddler trophies to honestly be some of the best content in the game. Like Gabe, who drew those Arkham comics, said, Art is about truth. And the rock city of today is but a shadow of itself as it's been overrun by like-minded activist weirdos. The likes who would agree with someone like that person who works at Compulsion Games. And Suicide Squad like Crystal Dynamics or Compulsion Games, these studios that personify that belief of rewriting new history by killing the legacies of what made these companies great before. Whether it's shooting Batman dead in an alley or turning Lara Croft into a man-jawed feminist, it's as they say, part of the plan. Oh which is to rewrite old stories, purge Batman them of anything they don't agree with, and use lies face, however they can to face, inject new histories face. and truths into legacy media. Until they no longer resemble what fans loved about these series to begin with. Ruben Langdon was a victim of these woke psychopaths, and he lost a role of a lifetime in Street Fighter because a single writer who gained Langdon's trust decided Langdon must be purged from the industry for no other reason than because they felt threatened by his existence. Could it be because Langdon is a white man? Could it be because he verbally spoke out against the pandemic or the virtue Says signaling nonsense that plagues his industry? Maybe it's all of that and more. The point is that there is a concerted effort, no matter how big or small, that's being pushed constantly from all corners of the gaming industry and beyond. Unfortunately, I am but one man, running a solo operation here on this channel, and I cannot realistically cover everything simultaneously. 
but I am doing my best to bring to light the stories of those who are being silenced for unethical reasons. And I want to shine a light, no matter how bright, on the parts of these industries that are plaguing this medium for all the wrong reasons. I have no problem with anyone regardless of their skin color or gender, but I don't think it's right to enforce these beliefs while also cherry-picking who needs to be cancelled like this. What Compulsion, Crystal, and Rocksteady have done here as well as Capcom to a degree is horrible. And how much more do we have to lose before enough is enough? It pains me knowing I'll never have another new Rock City Batman game that respects the source material like those four games did in the 2010s. It pains me that Lara Croft will likely become a feminist charge woke disaster and it angers me that people like Langdon are being unjustly ruined to fit narratives. The stink of this industry needs to be fixed, but I can't do it alone. So I ask you if you have any stories that need telling, you find a way to tell them. Whether it's through social media, comments, emails to me or whoever else, I need the help of the people watching to save gaming and beyond. I refuse to believe that things can only get worse, and I'm sure there are those out there who see what I do as only a negative light. But the truth is that in order for there to be good, sometimes you need to do bad things. And the truth is, dear viewer, we have to work together as a community to keep this industry more accountable and just of their actions. Otherwise, all that will be left is utter chaos. And I don't know about you, but I love gaming too much to see it fall to ruin. So, I thank you for watching. Consider liking, subscribing, and sharing the video to spread awareness as well. I genuinely appreciate anyone who even considers watching anything I've made. And know that without your viewership, I'm nothing. So I will do my best to be worthy of your support. Thanks to my patrons as always, and have a wonderful day. There sure is a lot of darkness in this industry, but if you ask me, I think the light is winning. I'll see you in the next one. Bro, well, I understand. We decided to collaborate. To I understand completely where Edemion's coming from. There are too many bad actors in the fucking industry for to, to be part of it because there's someone's gunning for you for some Katara odd reason. And Suki, the only good looking ones, the freedom fighters are all correct so far, just too early. Let me see, hold on. Let me type it in, hold on. Uh so with those watch this, thank you for watching, like, subscribe, share, follow, and comment. We did this reaction with Demion talking about the Capcom exposed for uh accepting woke agenda and Batman Arkham artist uh, rejects the sushi squad now um i would like to say to give that dude his job back he didn't deserve any of that shit that happened to him um at all he made it very clear he didn't know what was going on x y and z and for that dude to just take his job like that you should rehire him capcom that's not fair to him come on bro that's not even cool and they are very much aware because they didn't get rid of him for Down Lake Cry, but they should put him back for um for uh put him back on Street Fighter's Ken Masters. Put him back, right? I know they're not gonna listen to me. They're not gonna see this, but like Jesus Christ, Says, if you hey, think teach, about it, it's not fair. The trick with drawing crop tops was again. That is not fair to do to happen to him. That is not cool. So with that said, I like to say thank you guys for watching. I like to see you guys next time. Like, share, follow, and comment. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Later's.